In this video, I'm going to go over the derivatives of inverse functions. So before we get to uh, how we do the derivatives of an inverse, uh, let's just remember some of the properties of uh, functions and their inverses and how they relate to each other. So if I have a function f of x, um, its inverse is written like this. f, uh, write a little negative 1 in the exponent of x. Um, the graphs of these are reflections, ref, let's try that again, reflections across the line y equals x. Sometimes that's called the origin line. Um, another property of a function and its inverse is that the inputs and the outputs swap places. So if we have f of 3 is equal to 5, well, f, the inverse of f of 5 is equal to 3, for example. So the inputs and the outputs swap places. Um, and then we have this relationship or this statement up here. So if g and f are uh, inverses of each other, we can compose them with each other and we end up with x. Another way of writing this is that f of f inverse of x is equal to um, x and f inverse of f of x is also equal to x. So if we take the original function, compose it with its inverse, uh, we end up with x. Okay, and then let's look at how this works on a graph. So suppose I have, um, I don't know, something like this. So some, maybe like a log function or... Um, a radical function. Um, on that graph, let's say I have the point A, B here. All right, so what the inverse looks like is, well, that's just reflected across the line y equals x. Okay, and so that graph uh, might look something, uh, let's see, this. Okay, and now if the point A, B is on the original function, the point uh, maybe here, uh, B, A is on this function. So the input and the output get swapped there. And then for calculate for um, the purposes of finding the derivative, well, if I want to find the derivative at a, b, that's going to tell, that's going to be what the slope of that tangent line is. And what we see is that that is delta y delta x. So the slope of that tangent line is equal to delta y over delta x. Now, if I find the derivative of the tangent line on the inverse, because the x's and the y's swap places, I'm going to take the reciprocal of uh, the derivative of the tangent line for the original function. So this is delta x over delta y. So that's kind of one of the other big ideas here, or main ideas that we need to remember, um, is that the uh, derivative of the original function is going to be the reciprocal of the inverse function. Okay, so remembering all of this, let's go through uh, a few examples here. So our first one says, for the function f of x equals x cubed plus 6, find f inver the derivative of the inverse function at negative 58. So we'll do this two separate ways. Uh, the first way is just to go through, find the inverse, then take the derivative, and then input negative 58. <coughs> Excuse me. So f inverse. In order to find this, what we want to do is we swap the x and the y. So this is going to be x is equal to y cubed plus 6, subtract 6, and then raise that to the one-third power, and that's equal to y, which we're going to write as f inverse of x. Okay, so f inverse of x is going to be x minus 6 raised to the one-third power. Next, I'm going to find, so we found this part, f inverse. 
Now I'm going to find the derivative of that. So this will be 1 third x minus 6 raised to the negative 2 thirds power, which is the same as 1 over 3 x minus 6 to the 2 thirds. And then we want to find that at negative 58. So f inverse derivative at negative 58. So I'm just going to plug in negative 58 into that formula that we found. 1 over 3 negative 58 minus 6 to the 2 thirds. Negative 58 minus 6 is negative 64. If I raise that to the 2 thirds power, well, that means the third root of negative 64, which is negative 4. And then I square that, so 16. So I get 1 over 3 times 16, which is 1 over 48. So there's our answer here. Okay, so that's one way we can do this. A second way we can do this is we have a formula. So f inverse prime of some value is equal to 1 over f prime of the inverse. Okay, so in order to do this, we need to be able to evaluate. So what in this case, um, this negative 58 corresponds to the x here. Okay, so in order to find this, we need to be able to evaluate um, f inverse of negative 58. But we don't know that yet. So thinking back, remember how the inputs and the outputs swap places. f inverse of negative 58 is going to equal some value. Similarly, f of some input is going to equal negative 58. So negative 58 is the output of the original function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that original function, x cubed plus 6, and set that to negative 58. In doing so, I get an x value of negative 4. So what this means is when I input negative 4 into the original function, I get out negative 58. Similarly, if I input negative 58 into the inverse, I get out negative 4. So what that means is, um, let me write this again. So um, f inverse derivative at negative 58, what we're trying to do is find, we're going to use this formula, f prime of f inverse of negative 58. Well, we found we just found out what this is equal to, and it's equal to negative 4. So we're going to say 1 over f prime of negative 4. So all we need to do is find f prime um, at negative 4. So um, what is f prime? Well, f prime is going to be, uh, we're using the original function up here. So this will just be, um, f of f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. So f prime at negative 4 is going to be uh, 16 times 3, 48. So in the denominator here, we'll have 1 over 48. And what we see is it matches uh, the other method that we did. So again, we can either use, use a formula, which is what we had right here, we can use this formula. Or we can just kind of go through it piece by piece. Find the inverse, find the derivative of the inverse, and then input that negative 58. Now, we'll have to use the formula if we are unable um, to find the inverse of the original function. Um, and we'll see an example of that. All right, let's do this one. Um, here, I'm just going to use the formula. So what I'm looking for is f, and there's a small typo. This should have a prime notation. So we want the derivative of this. So for f of x equals x cubed plus 3, find f inverse, the derivative of uh, the inverse function at negative 213. So f inverse prime of negative 213. That is going to be equal to 1 over f prime of f inverse negative 2, 1, 3. Okay, so first thing we want to do is come up with that input-output relationship. So f inverse of negative 2, 1, 3 is going to equal some output. 
Similarly, f of some input is equal to negative 2, 1, 3. So we're going to set the original function equal to that output. So x cubed equals negative 2, 1, 6. Cube root both sides, x is going to be equal to negative 6. So f of negative 6 is equal to negative 213. Similarly, f inverse of negative 213 is equal to negative 6. So this right here is what I'm going to replace f inverse of negative 213 with. So this is 1 over f prime of negative 6. Okay, so the only other thing we need to do is find f prime. So f prime of x is going to be 3x squared. f prime of negative 6 is going to be negative 6 squared is 36 times 3 is 108. So this is just equal to 1 over 108. Again, we could have gone through this one much like we did over here. Find the inverse, find the derivative of the inverse, and then plug in the value. And the reason we could have done that is because our function down here, is e we can easily find that inverse. On this last example, oops. Um, I guess I didn't erase, um, but I guess I can just talk through this. On this last example, our function f of x equals 10 square root x plus x, that's going to be quite challenging to find the inverse of. So we, we kind of our only option is to use the formula here. Okay, so using the formula, we need to find the input-output pair. Um, and... Uh, doing that, we take the function, um, we take our function 10 root x plus x, and we're going to set it equal to 24. Because what's going on here is we're saying f inverse of 24 is equal to sum output in the same way that f of sum input is equal to 24. So we set our original function equal to 24. We're going to solve this radical equation. Um, square both sides, it becomes a quadratic down here. And then we end up with these two values, uh, but we want to make sure that uh, both actually work. And in fact, only the four works in our original equation up here. So what that means is f, f of four is equal to 24 in the same way f inverse of 24 is equal to four. So that four is what we write in right here. So 1 over f prime of 4, I find f prime, and then I evaluate it at 4, and we get 7 halves. So 1 over 7 halves is equal to 2 sevenths. And that's it.